on the outskirts of Dhaka. The brick kilns are working flat out. Labourers, mostly migrants from distant villages, dig out clay from the riverbed. It's gruelling work reliant on Bangladesh's dry season. The hand-shaped bricks have to bake in the sun before firing in kilns. It's a process powered by sulphur-rich coal, one of the country's dirtiest. The industry that makes these bricks is identical to the one that built cities like London. And it was pollution from our industrial revolution that gave rise to the global warming that now imperils countries like Bangladesh. But now climate change is a reality. The key question is this. Do developing countries have an option to grow in a way that doesn't make climate change any worse? The workers can't turn out bricks fast enough. The capital has an insatiable demand as its population continues to grow. Hundreds of thousands of people are coming to Dhaka every year, many forced here by a rapidly changing environment in the lowest lying coastal areas. We have more than 150 million people in less than 150,000 square kilometers. Um, very poor country at the same time, subject to cyclones and floods, which get exacerbated with climate change. So we. Uh, in any kind of index of vulnerability you make, Bangladesh will come in the top three, whatever criteria you want to choose. Leading climate change experts like Professor Huck argue that the best way to insulate the vulnerable poor from climate threats is to lift them out of poverty. The paradox the Paris climate talks are designed to solve is how to enable that without making the people of Bangladesh and other developing nations the polluters of the future. A paradox writ large here in the Sundarbans, the world's largest mangrove forest. It's the muddy stronghold of the last Bengal tigers and a natural barrage defending Bangladesh's millions from violent tropical cyclones. But on its very edge, construction is underway. There are a few countries facing more climate change risks than Bangladesh, yet the site I'm currently standing on is being hurriedly prepared for the construction of a 1.3 gigawatt power plant fueled exclusively by imported coal. After protests by environmentalists, the Rampal power project is so sensitive that when we arrived to film, we were politely asked to leave. The science says the future of places like Bangladesh requires rapid phase-out of the dirtiest sources of power. And much of the climate talks in Paris next week is focused on doing exactly that. But according to Bangladesh's environment minister, all his neighbours burn coal and economic growth is a priority. India is heavily dependent on coal. Indonesia is dependent on coal. So is Australia. Uh, is it my first option? No. Is it my second option? No. My third option? No. But I do not have anything else. But could Bangladesh be guided by another light? This woman's house is powered by solar energy, a rooftop panel, controller and battery for storage. It provides a fraction of the energy a British house uses, but in a poor home, it's life-changing. <laughs> For purely uh, national environmental reasons, I'm opposed to using coal in the future. And I think we don't need to. I think renewables will replace coal if we put our investments into it. And when it comes to domestic solar energy, Bangladesh leads the world. Factories like this have assembled units for four million homes. It's expected to be seven million within a couple of years. The costs of solar is still falling, and efficient new appliances mean even Bangladesh's poor can have not just light, but TVs and fridges. So the whole lifestyle is getting changed, right? The connectivity, you are using modern, you are using literally modern gadgets in a rural, uh, rural setting, right? And from the home, now the solar is moving to the paddy fields. Now we are rolling out solar irrigation pumps. 
right? Which is replacing the traditional diesel pumps. This high-tech plant is just a few kilometers from the belching brick kilns. Some owners have borrowed money to modernize their furnaces, halving their pollution. But what's the incentive for others, especially given Bangladesh accounts for just 0.3% of the world's carbon emissions? Developed countries grew rich from dirty industries. Can we really expect poor ones to clean up their act without more help from us?